Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Spur video. We're going to have a look at whether let's take the 14 days for today's Spur video. Day 10 will take us to the 10th of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Excel GFS at ECM Ensembles. They run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us well into the second half of March. I should get on that for you. In a moment, <laughs> just to say that the first video to say was the uh, 6 a.m. upload. We released the EC 30 day forecast as well. So please check out those two videos. Please like, share, and subscribe on the vids. Thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for uh, doing that for Gavs or Weather Vids. And uh, we need to put on around 15 subscribers now, 1 5, to get ourselves to 15.6k. So it could give us a sub, tell friends and family to subscribe as well. Help get us to 15.6k. And then we can push on to 16k, which of course is the ultimate target. And um, thank you so very much everybody uh, for uh, for doing that. Right, let's have a look then. We're going to begin with the uh, Polar Vortex status page at Weather Is Cool. So uh, they're reporting today that the SPV, Stratospheric Polar Vortex, is currently weaker than all other years in the era of five record for today's date. The uh, zonal mean zonal wind at 10 HPA 60 degrees north is today at minus 19.1 ms. Wow, wow, wow. This is how things looking in terms of the graph. So you can see we are at date record levels now, the blue line here. Going virtually down to minus 20, goodness gracious me. Um, no, uh, a big old reversal of the zone wings taking place at 10 HPA currently. Follows on from the first reversal of zone wings that we have like a week or so ago. Uh, so this is a double dip reversal, if you like a double reversal. And this second reversal even stronger than uh, the first re reversal, putting in the GFS ensembles. It's got a little bit further to fall as well, so tomorrow may be even lower. And then we see the uh, zone wing gradually starting to tick up, but still in reverse, like even in a week's time, not to get to the middle of March, we find the zone wing going weakly back into positive territory there. Interestingly, we're sort of being reversing at 30 HPA for the first time uh, as well today. So this is from University of Berlin, yeah, based on last night's um, E7-12Z run. So this gets us to today, 28th of uh, February, so it's like from yesterday for today, uh, and it shows that, yes, Zola Wind in reverse today at 38 PA, minus 1.8 there. Uh, that tells us that the um, impacts from the SSW now begins to move towards the troposphere, so of course 38 PA is closer to the troposphere, and 10 HPA, when the zone wing goes into reverse at 30 HPA, this tells us that propagation is taking place, and uh, and so, you know, we're getting closer now to tropospheric impacts from the sudden stratospheric warming. How interesting. Uh, right, okay, central temperature is currently sitting at uh, 6.5 now, which is 2.7 degrees above average, that is provisional to yesterday, to the 27th of uh, February. So, a little bit further forward, probably going to finish up probably around 6.4, perhaps something like that, when this updates tomorrow, I would have thought. So, yeah, it's going to be very mild February, and uh, that will seal us into a milder than average winter, uh, of course, more about that in the next few days. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red light is the third year upper air temperature average for Reading. Another, uh, su another uh, suggested uh, town, um, city uh, for this part of the video. If you'd like to have your local town city feature within this part of the video, then you can email us at gasbervis at gmail.com or you can ask us through the comments. I'll be more than happy to do that. So, starting off below average with the upper air temperatures at the moment, we will see the upper air temperature going a little bit uh, less cold, milder, through the uh, middle and second half of this week, although sort of high pressure, so we won't necessarily realise that uh, lift up in the upper air temperatures. And then we go colder than average, a defined definitive cold and average period now setting up through next week. The GFS ensembles have definitely firmed up on that. 
not a gate quite a significant drop in the temperature taking place through the course of next week. And it's not really until we get towards the middle of uh, March now that the upper air temperatures show much sign of recovery. So the first half of March could be uh, rather on the cold side. Precipitation-wise, there'll be a lot of dry weather over the next few days. But as we go towards the middle of uh, March, it does get much more unsettled. And, um, you know, there could be some spells of rain coming. But that is extended range and is a long way out. Maybe not just rain, possibly some snow as well. This is our snow row is looking for redding. Um, so, yeah, quite quite um, significant snow spikes there. Uh, through the second week of March, maybe we will see some snow. Uh, and perhaps I start doing, doing snow watch. I <laughs> haven't done many snow watches this season, but maybe, maybe, maybe snow watch will be on the way. In the coming days, watch this space. Temperature anomaly is on the 28th February to the 8th of March. It's going to be cold and now not just the UK, but through most parts of uh, Europe, actually. And the precipitation anomaly from the 28th of February to the 8th of March, drier than normal, although maybe not quite as dry as it has been. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt from EarthNoSchool.net shows up. We've got high pressure just to our west and northwest today, centre through there. And that's bringing in again a cool and cloudy northeasterly wind, especially across England and Wales. Right, let's start going through the chart data then. This is how late you can make your run. Is looking for midnight on Friday. High pressure over and to the north. We're going to basically in the same situation we're in at the moment. Through the weekend, that high pressure shows retrogression. I'll say it again. Retrogression. Uh, up towards Greenland and Iceland. Cold at Nordwind being set in on Sunday. And then we go into the open up next week and look at this. Trough drops southwards through the country in combination with a blocking area of high pressure over Greenland ice and we introduce what looks like a cold north to northeast wind with low pressure in the flow there would be the chance of a uh, wintry weather maybe an increasing chance of wintry weather i can't again with high pressure over to the northwest country on friday the high pressure pulling up towards greenland and iceland uh by sunday with colder northerly winds beginning to dig in and then the uh, cold air backs westwards across the north and western europe for the early part of next week as the high pressure goes into retrograde and sits over greenland and iceland so down comes that cold and wintry north northeasterly wind there with icon the gfs midnight run again showing the high pressure system over the country on Friday, pushing up towards Greenland and Iceland over weekend to land this cooler, colder north northeast to start setting in through Sunday, and that carries on into the early part of next week with a high pressure blocking around Greenland and Iceland, low pressure plunging southwards through the North Sea, we turn the wind into a cold north or northeasterly. So, through the early middle part of next week, looking cold and wintry here. With uh, the GFS midnight run, of course, where any wintry weather is, got to firm up on max long way off. But the broad trend with the GFS has shifted to the other models today to turn things cold and wintry through the early to middle part of next week. That's day 10. High pressure sitting over country it means areas of low pressure at bay. That's a cold area of high pressure, so we'll deliver significant overnight frost next week. Um, now we go beyond that, we try to get high pressure going over the Scandinavia, so a little bit of a battle setting up by the 11th of March, just beyond day 10, high pressure over Scandinavia, low pressure trying to come in from Arctic Atlantic, could be all sorts of fun and games with that, eventually by the middle of March, the low pressure wins the battle and we turn win into mild or southwest, but that is a very, very long way off in this pattern. The GFS 6 then, the very latest, again, showing high pressure and control of the weather on Friday, that high pressure pushing up, retrogressing, brrr, 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 retrogressing, retrogressing towards um, Greenland and Iceland over the weekend, allowing the wind to turn into cold north or northeasterly. Um, and just turns increasingly cold really through the early part of next week with a large blocking area of high pressure and cold air pushing out of northern Europe. Um, we get channel low there. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> it's been a long time since we've had one of those channel low by the middle of uh, next week. 
if that came off, it would deliver um, potentially quite significant and disruptive snow down to the south. Of course, it's over a week away, so the loam could be further north, could be further south. It might not even um, verify, there might, might not even be an area of low pressure by the middle of next week. It's that far away. But the GFS 6S is producing a snow event for the south uh, middle of next week. That load pushes through to Germany. We keep wind in from a very cold and wintry north or northeast direction all the way up to day 10. Low pressure sits over the country then around after day 10. So goodness knows what sort of precipitation that would bring it is within quite cold air. Uh, and they start trying to turn things a bit milder. Um, but to, to be honest, still really we're keeping the wind in from a northerly direction. So I think the GFS is pretty cold, you know, more or less from the weekend right way through to the middle of March. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run. From Tometio.com, we've got showery distance in from the east on those north feasty winds today and tonight and tomorrow as well. Gradually, by the end of the week, things will be uh, drying out. And then by the time we get through to the weekend, we start seeing those snow showers beginning to appear just to our far door and uh, northeast. As we go into the weekend, those snow showers becoming increasingly widespread in the eastern parts of the country as the air gets colder. Um, that takes us through to around Tuesday. I remember Channel Low is moving through, through the south, and uh, all that being snow, probably quite disruptive snow to southern parts of the country. Meanwhile, elsewhere we have further snow showers, and, you know, they could be disruptive in their own right. All of this is just for fun, remember. Uh, so we've just got to wait and see how things work out, you know, in terms of the detail. But the suggestion is there that things are increasingly cold, and uh, wintry through the course of next week. Right, GM. Again, GM. If you enjoyed the video, by the way, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this all about videos? Don't get to friends about gas. Yeah, whether it's 15 subs is all we need to get to 15.6k. Please give us a sub. Thank you so very much, everyone, for doing that. GM. Again, high pressure and control of the weather over the weekend and into next week. High pressure pulling up. To Greenland and Iceland, winds coming in from a cold northerly direction through the course of next week. So increasingly cold and winter is a big blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. That is Wednesday next week. It looks very cold and wintry, that doesn't it? Big block over Greenland and uh, we've got a wind in from the north and from the northeast as well. So there's kinks in the isobars, by the way. We look out for kinky isobars. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they could bring, you know, <laughs> areas of snow showers and little troughs and convergent lines in from the northeast. So always look out for your kinky isobars. By day, <laughs> it sounds so sorry, buddy. By day 10, um, we've <laughs> got low pressure. It's more Friday night, miss. Isn't it more Friday night? By day 10, uh, we've got low pressure running through the channel, maybe bringing some heavy rain, possibly snow, into the south. Bit of a channel over hint, man. By day 10 with the GM. And then the ECM at WF again, with high pressure over and to the north, northwest country on Friday. Lots of dry weather through the weekend into the early part of next week. That high pressure increasingly focused on green and ice and allowing colder air to be digging in from the north and from the northeast. So as we go through next week, increasingly cold and wintry signals here with a large blocking feature around Greenland, Iceland, trough of low pressure through the north and the west of uh, Europe. And um, again, by day 10, just the idea that low pressure may be starting to tap from the southwest running into that cold air. Could this low, for example, become a channel low? Wow, wow, wow. Few hints, aren't there? This is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometio.com. Uh, initially, a lot of dry weather, you know, showery bursts coming in on these cloudy northeast winds at the moment, but a lot of dry weather to come uh, through this week and into the weekend. Notice by the weekend, though, showers starting to turn just a little bit wintry up in the north and in the northeast. And to get into the open part of next week, we've got an area of snow coming southwards across the country. Uh, introducing then very cold air from the north northeast. All the precipitation then turns to snow and uh, looks wintry. That's all you can say, really, by day 10. 
Uh, so as we get to a super tip of March, got this area of wet weather to our south and southwest that's running into that cold air. So, 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 so. Uh, will that deliver significant snow for the south? We'll have to wait and see close to the time frame. Um, this is the option on the table within the ECF Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Uh, gets us to the 10th of March. Um, all members of the ECF Ensemble 51 out of 51 going for blocking to be around Greenland and low pressure to be to the south and the east. That allows cold air to dig in from the north. There's a low pressure on Zintac cold air. There is wintry potential. And to it time... These are the options that we've got. Gets to the 15th of March. 21 members of the ECM on top of keep that blocking going around Greenland. Low pressure again through the north and west of Europe. That looks potentially cold and wintry. Uh, another 16 with high pressure again blocking things out around Greenland. Low pressure is to our south and east. So that looks potentially cold as well. Winds in from the northeast. And then 14, a little bit milder. We lose a block. We have low pressure. To our west, a little bit of higher pressure, perhaps around France, and winds a little bit more from a west or southwesterly direction. That's the minority option, though. Those four teams, a majority option, puts him a 21 there, together with a 16 here. The majority option is actually quite cold, I think, and uh, still wintry even up to the middle of March. Goodness gracious me. Seven feet to finally be 500 millibar high tide breaking down in two week periods. The first week period takes from the 28th of February to the 6th of March, the coming week, dominated by high pressure over to the north of the country, main drive, but chilly with winds in from the uh, northeast. Week two will be the 7th to the 13th of March, high pressure around France and Spain, winds coming up from the southwesterly direction. No, not much cold weather there for week two from the, from the CFS. So, we, uh, CFS, you know, as ever, trying to keep things mild. Um, and it's a bit of a warning, you know, this might go down the tunes. It's cold weather, you never know. Um, when you're talking about chance of colder weather, lie a week or so away. So, CFS sounding a warning there. Uh, let's not get complacent. Um, the week three, week three, anyway, it's the 14th to 20th of March. Lots of mild, high pressure around Spain, low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, and uh, winds coming up from the southwest. And then week four is the uh, 21st, 27th of March, high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, probably setting the jet stream and wind flow on the northwest southeast trajectory. So that could be turned a bit cooler uh, into the second half of March. We should wait and see about that. And we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for doing that for uh, Gav's Weatherby. So it's all looking very, very interesting, isn't it? Certainly the shorter range have all firmed up on cold weather next week. All of them are going for it. UK Mayor, Icon, GFS, GM, and ECM, the, the big five bars, they're all going for cold weather only oh, next week. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be right, but, you know, <laughs> pretty good cross ball agreement today. We'll wait and see how things are looking tomorrow. Will we have a wobble tomorrow? I wonder. So, um, if you could give us a sub and help get us 15.6k, that would be absolutely lovely. Thanks so very much, everybody, for doing that. We're in a very interesting time at the moment. So, tell friends and family about Gaz Worthies and uh, the work that we do here on the channel. And uh, we thank you so very much, everybody, for that. We will see you tomorrow for our 6 a.m. upload for USA Broadcast. And we're going to have our 10 to 14 day live tomorrow. That'll be a very interesting live stream, I think. If we charts keep up, if we don't get a wobble, then I reckon Spurs live stream could be quite a big one. There'll be a lot of interest, I think. So uh, we shall see how things are looking tomorrow. For this video, though, that's all for now. You enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.